VH1 TV, your best experience. Good business means seeing the possibilities and maximizing opportunities. Making sure you have a responsive support system. Backs your business goals. A partner that gives you a stable platform with reliable connectivity and seamless solutions and better understands the tools required to take you to the next level. With so many moving parts in running a business, we do our best to provide you with some stability. The only kind of stability you can find with MTN Business Broadband, the fastest and most reliable internet provider in Ghana. Making sure you stay ahead and stay connected because we understand what makes your business tick. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. The Natalie Fort Show is sponsored by MTN, Absa Bank Ghana, Dogtas Exclusive, Moven Pick Ambassador Hotel, supported by Mahalia Collection, Crazy Daisies, The Club G100, Self Search, Weller Dazzles, Beldel Artistry, Imphonie <laughs> Good evening to you and welcome to another episode of the Natalie Fort Show. It's so exciting to come into your homes again this Sunday evening and I'm looking forward to a wonderful conversation with an extraordinary events organizer, a father, a husband, Richard Abbey Jr., who's coming to share his lovely life story. Richard, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you very much. I remember the first time we met I was booked to host the Ghana Insurance Awards, was it? Exactly. That was, when was it? It was 2021. Yeah, 2021. What Somewhere month? around August or something. It was in August. Yeah. 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 And how, how's life been since? Uh, well, it's, it's been, you're trying to survive, especially post-COVID, and then also mm -hmm. making sure that you have to sustain. I mean, one of the things I discovered is that trying to sustain the, the kind of business that you have at a certain point is the mm -hmm. most difficult thing you have to do. And so that's what we keep doing, trying to sustain the business and then moving forward and trying to move outside the continent and doing shows like even outside the country and all that. So we had the 40 and the 40 Africa. And that has been some kind of a new thing that we have yeah. done. I mean, so far, I would say it's been progressive. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, I've been watching your journey, and it's been, it's been pretty good yeah. so far. Yeah. And thank you for having me be a part of the Ghana Insurance Awards. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great experience. Now, yeah. one question I always like to ask yeah. my guest is, what's the state of your life right now as we speak? I mean, that's, that's kind of a tricky question. I don't know <laughs> that. But the thing is, the state of my life is that, let me put it this way, that I am at a point where I, I am working very hard to be able to, to make sure that I have a business that will, uh, generations will be able to take it up, of course. I mean, have my children be able to take up the business. So I am trying to, as much as possible, also impart society. I mean, don't forget that in my space and where I find myself, it's becoming more like an industry, which is the awards. Yeah. That it's very key that you, you have to recognize people. I have always thought that and, and leave that it's not the best for people to give tributes mm -hmm. when you are dead and all that. People must be recognized. So I am still at the state of trying to impact in society. I am in a state where, unless I'm not getting your question, but I, <laughs> I, I go on to believe that, yeah, of course, that question. exactly yeah. um, also try to move beyond, go international with the events. I mean, not to stay only just uh, in Ghana as well because yeah. the, uh, the impact should not just be felt in my yeah. circles, but that we can move forward with it and all that. So basically, that's the state. I mean, I'm in a state of being a husband, mm -hmm. of course, and being a family man at the same time, yeah. trying to combine taking care of three children at the same two time children? and uh, yeah three children three i mean children. yeah there, there were four but we actually lost one and uh, you lost yeah, the child. yeah those, those are things maybe we'll discuss yes of course there was a bit of a holy heart mm -hmm. and and uh, it's sad I, 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 well i'm on a path i need to be guided by what i see because no, when we, i get into this thing get into that because one thing it, that it makes me feel you know that sort of a thing. i think it's beautiful <laughs> for people to yeah. see 
people like you mm. who are such high achievers mm. in the fullness of your being sure. you know so it's not just the exciting points yeah. top events mm. you know celebrating people it's also yeah. the sad moments you know? exactly and that's course. what makes people appreciate your journey a lot more. I, I, I do agree and that even she takes me back to the fact that we need to look at our systems in terms of even uh, when it comes to hospitals and all that yeah. because the issue was that I recall that it was a holy heart one was sealed and then the other wasn't I mean so at the point when they had to take a decision that's like child? six months I mean child of course and I was just, I t sometimes I ask myself, if, I, if it was now, probably I've had the money to have taken him to maybe Israel or something. Yeah. But even that they said the age wasn't the right age to actually yeah. operate upon, he had to leave for. I said, but God has his own way of doing things. So you cannot question the father. So I mean, those, those are some of the difficulties. So like I said, I mean, taking care of these two children yeah. at the same time, balancing it would work and trying to be a family man mm -hmm. and all that. So, well, that's that's what balancing yeah. act. <laughs> oh, well, of course. I mean, you have to be balanced because the thing is that if you try to strive for like looking for money, uh, of course, I mean, which is key, mm -hmm. I mean, very important, especially at this stage and all that because you have a family. I've mm -hmm. discovered that when you start making money at a certain point, the money is not yours again. It's for people. It's for people. In fact, that's, that's the state. It looks like God gives you the money to give to people, uh, which, which is where we are now. And then at the same time, you need to now make sure that you can come home and they say, Daddy, welcome and all yes, that. Yes. Do homework. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be present <laughs> on every <laughs> end. Yeah, really cool. you know. Yeah. I mean, that sort of do homework and in the morning try to check that they're going to school and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it's interesting sometimes when you look at them and you say, ah, these children actually came out from your loins. <laughs> <laughs> An extension of you. You know. So the state of your life right now, from what yeah. I gather from what you're okay. saying, is yeah. you're, you're looking to expand your business yes. beyond the borders of this nation. Exactly. Yes. You're looking to be a present father, yes. an active husband, exactly. and grow your business for yes. generations to come. Yes. Yeah. So let's go some years back. Okay. How was your childhood? Well, so I, I was born and uh, in Abu Sokan. You know that place is the spare pass area, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it's quite a very local kind of place. I mean, I not know. like the East Legons and Cantonments. <laughs> yeah. and all where that. exactly were you? I born mean, there? of course, I was. There. So we called Abu uh -huh. because that's the name of the place. That's uh -huh. where we sell the spare pass. Yes, yes. So yes. most of the cars, and then mm -hmm. when you have problem with uh, your mechanical fault, that's where actually Abu go and all that. Yes, I, 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 I but I think my dad and my mom separated so at a very younger age and at 1.5 or one and a half I did I had to be my mom go to my grandmother at a point and all that so I my mother had to leave marriage and had to go to uh, Nigeria so I saw my mother at the age of 18 I didn't see my mother until so who I was were you 18. living with up and no. from one and a half till so 18. so what should I do so with my mom I mean the, no no then with my mom but she had to leave and so I was left with my grandmother so you're raised uh, by your grandmother? You're my grandmother, more or less, of course. But my auntie really raised me. If you talk of people who tell you that your fingernails and your mm -hmm. toes are like, no, you have to cut it down, yeah. then it's my auntie. Yeah. In terms of where I got proper training, mm -hmm. then it's my auntie. Because I stayed most of the formative years mm -hmm. in terms of pound foo foo and learning yeah. how to do busy things and all that. Then I was there. But I was shuffling between grandma, auntie, and sometimes your uncle. I mean, so easy. <laughs> so I, I, I am not the Sigmund Freud type of person where you are regularized. Like, you know, you keep moving. Uh, from here to here and all that that's the thing that I, I, I could say so from 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 my grandmother's and at a point when I went to my auntie then I needed to come to my my grandfather and about your, fa your father no, my dad at the time you know because of all these kind of marriage confusions and all that I'm sure that sometimes it was difficult for him to have seen the potential that I had carried at the time and that's that's the one thing that but I mean we've we've crossed it up to now but at the point yeah, he, he thought that I should, I was with the uncle, it was fine, I was with my mm -hmm. grandmother, it was fine and all that. But that was my struggling moments because yeah. in this very age and at the time, I stayed with my uncle where, who had a wife who, uh, you know, when they give you soup, you know, you, you soup in a bowl, but you could see the, 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 the you could turn the soup and you see the, that you have soup, but you see the under of the, the plate. The bottom of the plate. Uh -huh, that tells you the kind of, you have to walk from a distance of, let's say, uh, Abu Sokan to what you call St. Anthony's. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was in good schools because I thought I would St. have been, not to say the earliest are not good, but mm -hmm. I was in some all these private institutions, institutions. and all that and so it was a very difficult time i mean sleeping on veranda for all the years i i, I my fingers i have a situation whereby somebody had to visit the house and uh, visit the boyfriend mm -hmm. and then on the veranda know the high heels that you wear usually yeah. and then the lady had to step on mine so if you look at this not too regular stepped on it because i had to be sleeping on the veranda at the time you understand and in an area where there's no proper drainage and yeah. public uh, toilet systems and all that. This one is that we have, there's no proper one in house, but it's a public one. And you have to always queue. 
<laughs> I you don't want you living, to take you there, but <laughs> I would love that you take yeah. you there. You were living with your <laughs> aunt your, and your uncle at the time. At, at, at the time, like shuffling. What happens is that maybe at a certain time, of course, maybe I don't know, but when I live with my uncle for some time, maybe I go back to my auntie yeah. and then I come back again there. So that's mm -hmm. how it was. So let, let's put it. Grandma came in very, like a very young age, mm -hmm. like one and a half yes. and two and all that. Now I moved on to my auntie. Then when I had been in my auntie for some time, time, I came back to my uncle. That's why I really started, let me say, faith, faith school, which was like my primary. Faith? Oh, yeah, faith, okay. faith admission school. Okay. So I started from the primary mm -hmm. from there. I mean, I, I had to be jumped because the things I had delayed in my age. Yeah, I, I, I didn't finish yeah. SS at the age that people finished, which was supposed to be 18. Mm -hmm. I finished 20. So I had two years that it looks like I had luck behind. Yeah, that. Even if they had not even jumped me, I think I would have been. <laughs> you know, it, God has his own thing. So it doesn't matter at the time you finish. The, the principle of the life is that it, it didn't matter that I had finished late, but I had people that finished and yet Before. couldn't have been able to move to a certain mm -hmm. level and all that. So I was then now with Anchor. And that's where really I was going to school to the faith. Went from there, move on to Accra Academy. Mm -hmm. You went to Accra yes, and Accra Academy, that. yes. I mean, uh, Accra Academy is where I became the senior prefect, I mean, uh, in Accra Academy. And then I was a day student for the first time for a day student to become uh, a school the prefect. prefect. Yeah, prefect oh, because wow. the borders were there. And, mm -hmm. uh, during the elections, the kind of dress that they wear mm -hmm. and all that. I, I was in tattered. I had to borrow uniforms and get shoes and all that. You had a difficult, a slightly a very difficult, difficult. No, not slight. Don't, don't even very call slight. Yeah, I, it's, it was really tough trying to get your way out and where you, you want to survive the system. I mean, you know, I don't even Did know what to Did you feel alone? I, because I, you were tossed point, around, there wasn't any consistency in terms at of... At the point, let me just say, I knew God at a very younger age. I mean, now I have 10 more of those things to marketing, maybe. <laughs> but at that <laughs> age, at the age of 10 or something, 12, I actually was in Deeper Life. There's a church called Deeper Life, which is, strict, is very strict in terms of holiness. and You can't even shake, I mean, women like that mm. and all that. So somehow I comforted myself in that area. That being knowing God at the time and preaching in JSS and all that. So it, it gave me those sort of uh, comfort at the time. So I didn't really feel lonely. But it's when I think about my mom, when I had not seen my mom, it's when sometimes I wonder where is she because yeah. she's in Nigeria. She sends things and then the people just take it like she. Sometimes they say they are bringing crayon pencils and you other money because you never get them. And that's another thing of family and all that. So I was really worried at the point that when will I see. Your mom. My mom and all that, yeah. But then, I mean, I, I, I didn't give up because I was, I got into things like selling of alumi and all that. Do you know alumi? I'm not sure she. You I know, actually don't know. You, know, I mean, you see, you are living. You are, I mean, the spoon. So you probably, I mean, the current generation would not know, but a lot of people who in the world would know. Alumi is, is an aluminium that we sell. Aluminium, on okay. yeah. And yeah. then we have copper. Mm -hmm. So those were the things we were selling. Where were you selling that? I didn't say just look at because when I was in. It means I was almost around 14 when I was even in GSS, if you look at it in terms of GSS 1 and all that. Now, I had, I had to survive because my age at GSS was not the regular one. Yeah. Because people finish at 15. Mm -hmm. But I think that in GSS 1, I was around 14 because I finished in 1997 in GSS. Mm -hmm. So you could calculate and say I was 17 yes. years. Okay. So in, in, the, in the face of when I was 14, I mean 13, 14 and all that, that's when I was doing street stand selling. Selling Koliba. Koliba is bottles. Bottoms, so you, you make yeah. a lot of money. There's something we call adjust scale. Maybe you, I don't know that will be interpreted later. Yes, when you, you get copper, mm -hmm. you get copper, you mold the mold, mold it, so it becomes very heavier and put on the scale. And then with the weight, and then sometimes you can, you can break the scale and get more money. <laughs> wow. And then, and then they, what we call pong pong. Hmm. You know, pong pong. <laughs> I don't know, Richard. You're yeah, pong 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 is uh, con carrying concrete, no okay. labor. Like when you carry this concrete, mm -hmm. those days it was three cities. Now it's very expensive. Okay. It's about 70 cities now. Mm -hmm. It's a good job. I, sometimes I remember all those times and you have to carry. So we were building most of that, but so kind. Oh, wow. Houses, yeah. That was my kind of childhood. It's How do you think that that childhood shaped you? You see, the thing about it, Natalie, is that. Sometimes the things you go actually strengthen you. Uh, the things you go through actually strengthen you because the kind of independence I had, I, I was born between my mom and my dad, and later on my mom went to give yeah. birth to another and my dad was. So I am in between. Mm. So I, I did more of working alone and be learning how to survive in, in that sort of circumstances, like selling rubber bag at the point and all that, at Kanishi and all that. And, and, and I mean, very difficult. You know, in Kanishi, if you have been there before, when they say rubber bag, mm -hmm. 10, 20. You, that I was 10, 20. Mm. We're selling 10, 20. Mm. When they shout, you must be smart and move and all that. You were learning a mm. bit of smartness, how to get to the people and sell the rubber quickly because there's a guy who's like a giant who will intimidate you mm. and you can't sell. So you pick certain behavior of resilience 
from this sort of age and all that. And that, that has built me somehow, even not giving up, even in this uh, current state, mm -hmm. in doing events where people say, no, 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 it won't be possible and all that. And I said, it's going to be possible. So you somehow it shaped me experience. in terms of making me uh, a kind of a strong person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Able to maneuver your way you around. Know, you, you know, you know, because the country you live in, Charlie, maneuverability is key. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it's true. really been a, a build up. From, yeah. from that kind of childhood, and I've learned things that I can tell people. Sometimes, mm -hmm. what story do you have to tell people who are coming oh, up, who think that they've gone through all the kind of challenges they can actually go through? When you live in a house where a ceiling is leaking, and then one is coming from the ground. So when I see the flooding, I tell my staff. <laughs> my staff was <laughs> telling me that it was leaking. I said, you know, yours is just leaking. Mine was actually coming from the from ground in Mataiko. You know Mataiko? Yeah, I know Mataiko. Go and check the place and see. I mean, it's, it's, it's a kind of a flooded area. Yeah. What's your, what's your relationship with your parents? like now oh no it's fine you know you know my dad at the point realized that there's some few mistakes that he had made mm -hmm. so and uh, that it was important that we reconcile and come back to the father okay at the age of 20 when i was now becoming a teacher and teaching schools and having bicycle to move around to teach and all that and then maybe i was now due to go to the university then that's when i went to stay with, with my him? with my dad and my dad. step, yeah. Now my step is very lovely as well. I mean, he, she she wasn't the kind of se segregated or separated, yes. some kind of separating you from she them. Was fair. Like, yeah. So they have that good relationship. But you see, my built up. If you look at it, it's not with my my mom more. I mean, she knows that if she's listening. The thing is because you didn't have that sort of formative years with her. You see, so it looks like I'm aligned to my auntie. Yeah more kind of thing uh, because i i learned a lot of things i mean where i ate the fufu and where i uh, where i was sick and they were taking care of me you know where you had malaria those times and you need some kobe uh, uh, kobe and uh, some pepper and all that in order to clear your mouth because they say your mouth is bitter this, this is where i, I got this so thing. you picked all those things i picked up. all those things from so it's 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 become like you know you know that people are attached to their mother like I look at my wife is attached, attached to the mother aunt. yes and no i'm like i'm not too attached more to my aunt to but mom. i see my my wife attached to the mom and mm -hmm. dad. I didn't see this you family see thing that. too much. Mm -hmm. It's only at the early like stage, like twenties, mm -hmm. and started experiencing a little of that with my stepmom and all that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, what a, an yeah. interesting, yeah. difficult, yeah, well, but beautiful in its own way. Exactly, because it it all came together. Yeah. So, how did you get into the events industry with all those little jobs that uh, you picked up yeah. at various stages? Yeah. So, I, I think I discovered that I had some organizational skills at the mm -hmm. point, and especially when how I won the election in in Accra Academy is still a surprise because uh, I realized I had some bit of communications, like I could talk to people and convince them. Now, then. Moving on, came to um, University of Ghana, mm -hmm. took up a lot of SRC kind of work. So student, rela student uh, representative council mm -hmm. and then JCL mm -hmm. work, which is the junior common room. So I was now involved into looking for sponsorship, yeah. um, managing a program, publicity chairman. I had mm -hmm. more than nine positions even within the, 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 the regime of one lady called Ashia. Mm -hmm. So I picked up that sort of, even Okuja Tua Blackwa, for instance, at the point, of course, I mean, I was with his team when he was doing campaign. Mm. I was one of his campaign managers at the point. I mean, I mean, but I'm not politically aligned. This is, was campaign. But that's what you were doing. Yeah, so it. that's what I was doing. I was actually doing campaign for money. Like, people paid me mm -hmm. and then I had to. And then they nicknamed me John Possible at that time mm -hmm. because I was then getting people to come into elections. So it was a black for anyone else? Yes, I mean, Samuel Uku himself oh, okay. at a point. Mm -hmm. I mean, but for Samuel Uku, I was rather the antagonist. I mean, because I needed to fight. <laughs> him. And then today we laugh over it wow. sometimes in Legon. And Legon is a place where a miniature of what you see yeah. in the national spectrum. It's I mean, all built it's up. It's even from more Legon. dangerous at that level. It is. Yeah, yes. it's even more dangerous. I can tell you that there were points that we, students can write and say the dean of Sina has resigned. And the dean will be going around mm -hmm. down the spleen, and the students will be having their way. Meanwhile, he hasn't resigned. Wow. That's the level of politicking mm -hmm. that was going on there. And all that. So I took up all these organizational skills from there. And then when they gave me positions and leadership, mm -hmm. then I, I, I built it up. So once I finished university, I decided that I would never work for anybody after Legon. So I finished school in 2006. I haven't worked for anybody before. Ever? It was a decision. Never. I don't know. So sometimes my staff say, you don't feel like it is when you talk to mm. us. So yes, I, I, I have not gone into that feeling. Mm. So in 2006, when I came and I formed a company called Abeyok. I mean, it was to look for adverts for the halls. Mm. So when I look for the adverts and then I go and then they give me the money and commission and all that. And that's how it began. Then gradually formed three members, myself and Latif Abakari, the gentleman yes, into production. Yes. We started doing trying to put things together on our own and all that. Then later we all split it and, and then, and then had to come and form Exodus in 2009. We started the events, yeah. And we're going to be talking about 
your success and yeah. the rise of Exodus sure. and your brand and what success means to you sure. in a few minutes here on the Natalie Ford Show. Stay with us. Good business means seeing the possibilities and maximizing opportunities. Making sure you have a responsive support system backs your business goals. A partner that gives you a stable platform with reliable connectivity and seamless solutions and better understands the tools required to take you to the next level. With so many moving parts in running a business, we do our best to provide you with some stability. The only kind of stability you can find with MTN Business Broadband, the fastest and most reliable internet provider in Ghana. Making sure you stay ahead and stay connected because we understand what makes your business tick. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. Hot cake. It's a show where ten fine-looking gentlemen. Mm? When I say fine, I mean guys with some six packs and some arms, just like myself. I try to secure a spot in this girl's life. I mean, when I say girl, I mean she's hot, hot cake, hot cake, and she's all definition of sexy. I mean, she's a super kind of sexy, super. She's a kind of sexy, and she's a kind of sexy. and she's smart. And beautiful. This show promises to be more fun, hmm? more drama. When I say drama, this kind of drama, and also a bit of fight, and a bit of romance, a bit of kisses here and there, and the things you would not even expect on the show, we will give it to you. You watching at home are going to be our TV in laws. I mean, you are going to help us secure that perfect gentleman, a perfect gentleman for the lady, the hot cake on the show. And yes, my name is Lexi the Comet and I'm going to be your host for this show. Dance off coming soon. So welcome back to the Natalie Ford Show. I'm loving my conversation with Richard Abe Jr. I hope you are too. Now, Richard, we're talking about your rise yeah. in the events industry. Do you consider yourself successful? Yes, um, you know, success is doing what you actually like passionately and then achieving it. I have not linked success to like making money because the thing is that as an entrepreneur is when you solve problems that you make money. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at the money, I look at solving problems, then I make the money. Now, the thing is that I say by grace of God, I consider it successful because it has been progressive yeah. in terms of how it started. Um, I mean, starting an event like a furniture fair for, for three years what or four years. What was your first event? Furniture fair. Furniture fair. It was called mm -hmm. Fanny Deck. Okay. And so I'm sitting here in the That's <laughs> very interesting. Wow. <laughs> and I recall Wonderful. that the difficulty I had was that at the time there wasn't social media and all that. So you need to pay for like advert in, in mm. the newspaper and then other mediums and all that. And it was not easy. But I still remember the media people that I worked with from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so I did it for about more than four times or so. Furniture and deck of fair. I added security and all that. You could have about 10, 15 exhibitors coming in mm -hmm. and all that. But then later on, I think it's in 2014 that the idea of what I call the, I don't know, the revolution of the awards mm -hmm. started somewhere in June 2014. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in my hall in Kaswa and then the name just came up, Ghana Oil and Gas Awards. And I have done that for like nine years now. And the thing is that the industry, I, I just came to mind that this industry are on the sea all the time trying to extract oil, they're busy and all. They don't have any fun moment. And I always say that maybe if Mr. Kwame Jepu is living to me, CIMG, mm -hmm. will understand that then there was CIMG, but the CIMG was looking at like 
go to company of the year. So one person, mm. Toyota keeps winning. Mm. Oil and gas company of the year or OMC of the year, God keeps winning. Yeah. So there wasn't alternative and options. Mm -hmm. I mean, so then I took, I decided that I would go into industry specific. So that's when I began oil and mm -hmm. gas awards. And that started in 2014. And I held the first one in Labari in 19. I, I gave a date mm -hmm. and I said, we're going to do it. Some mm -hmm. of my partners said, we cannot do it. We need to look for sponsorship. I, I, this country has sponsorship. I don't really believe in it. I believe in self-financing event. It's been so, e has it been easy? I mean, no, it's been easy at all. Because the thing is that everybody tells you I don't have budget. And everybody tells you, oh, the budget is decided somewhere in the mm, last yes. quarter. You <laughs> didn't come that. well. No. So yeah. I built events that have ability to sell each ticket and all that. That's what I do. Even when I'm training people in event master class right now, it's what I'm telling them, that your dependency on sponsorship will be your problem. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I have taught people to do. So when I started that one, then I started building the industry ones, which included, I don't know, but the manufacturing. Yes, I was. Then I saw the industry. It was left out. It was only one person being awarded in the country. Then I moved on to come to what I call even aviation. But then I sold the aviation finally because I, I had to sell to somebody. Then I came on and thought of the, what I call the insurance mm -hmm. because the insurance industry was that the banking had been taken. Yes. And so I came into the insurance industry and registered i always trademark these names even ahead trademark. of time yes i took money like even years before and i go to do them then i moved on to auto so i was doing auto hours but i had a little challenge because the nominees were not ready to actually give cars and demo cars to mm. actually practically experience it and that's supposed to be a, like a festival a test drive festival that people yeah, can people have to feel you know feel and, and all that so exactly. i had to at the point break it i'm coming back again because mm. i've realized that manufacturing they're not bringing assembling mm. and manufacturing so maybe I mean, uh, the companies will be ready to sort of uh, give that sort of room and all that. Even introduce Auto Diary. That's when even President Shegel became one mm -hmm. of the first person to host that program. Mm -hmm. Now President Shegel is big mm -hmm. and all that. I mean, so we, we, we've gone through phases of trying to introduce specific. And then the, the, the boom is like the 40 and the 40. Yes, 40 which, and the 40 which, is remarkable. Yeah, this, this I mean, they're all remarkable. 40 and the 40 yeah, is of remarkable. course. I mean, that has a, it might be just the advantage of oil and gas, but mm -hmm. the thing is that this has more of like the publicity yeah. and sort of a thing where young people... The narrative yes, is very empowering. You know, yeah. you, especially in a country where they say that you can be president at the age of 40. Yes. And it's like when you're becoming 40, naturally, sometimes you get even scared. Even mm -hmm. my friend was telling me at 38 and 39, mm -hmm. he was scared. Why? He was asking, what have I achieved? Yeah. Even though it's not too late to say that, but it, you get to know that that age, it means it's like a very key... key. Age and all that. So we reward people, I mean, most influential people within the continent or not, in the nation that has excelled and all that. And, 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 and then now we move finally to go to 40 and 40 Africa, which brought about 16 countries into this country and all that. And all that. So I, in, in coming up, uh, not only do I do I was, but I was doing events like lunching, mm. like, pro, you understand? So there are programs smaller that I events. do, smaller events that I did. But I thought that it was important for you to own your own event. Mm. Because otherwise, you'll be depending and waiting that somebody brings for a product for you to, to lunch. And then it doesn't work a conference for you to hold. <laughs> yeah. One of the largest conferences I've had in 2017 was a British Council Enterprise Africa Summit. It was, it was good. So these things, then I, I decided to do divers, diversification of funds mm -hmm. that not necessarily stay in the event, get to buy your own equipment. So mm -hmm. I have my own sound equipment. I have my camera that takes a video of me now. And then I got into trying to build my own stage. So nobody builds my stage. Nobody so builds I build, your stage. Yeah, I build my stage. I mean, everything about this event industry is creativity. Because the thing is that you have to do that thing, you're doing it every year. Mm. So how, what difference, what ambience are you creating? Yeah. And I believe in branding. It's one of the stronger things I believe in, that you need to brand a thing to extend that people actually then have a perception about that is great. And also ensure credibility. And our award process is it's incredible because you have an awarding board. So Richard is just one person yeah. in there. He has a third party consultant who is looking at the processes and all that. I mean, I've been a part yeah. of it through the insurance. Exactly, board, so of I can, course. I can you did very good on, on, on that. Of course, I mean, <laughs> Thank you, you so speak much. good English. You know Thank that. You. So. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Richard. Yeah. What do you love most about what you do? Yes, it's the fact that I'm able to rethink and re create and, 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 and design things. So even my designer on like, for instance, if he's doing a design, I, I make input into it. Mm. Even the video guy, if he's trying to do the sound effect he wants to pick, I make input make into input. it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really like about it. The fact that I sort of engineer, I get into the process. I lead from the front and not from the back. Do you get it? Like, I understand that if there's a gunshot, I could take the gunshot from the beginning. But I want to lead from the front and then also be part of the whole process. And that's what... I, I, I enjoy most about these events and all that. And you know, one of the biggest things that happened last, just this year is that after the Africa 40 under 40, a country in South, like South, South Africa, for instance, there was a nominee who said he's buying the, the hosting and licensing. Yeah. 
So he's, he's actually been given a license. For me, to I don't run know, the to, to run the awards next year in 2023. And I have to be there. I've already been there once. I have to go there again to make sure Fortune and Fortune Africa becomes big there. Now, in this country, I have not seen, I don't know, people give franchise. We go and take franchise. But this was a young man who came from Abuzuka and slept on the veranda. And finally gives a franchise to a company who pays for a hosting fee. And is now going to organize Fortune and Fortune Africa. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so inspiring. Yeah. Now, Richard, you're a father as well. We spoke briefly yeah. about your father of three. Yeah. Tell me about your role as a father. Yeah. You know, you know one of the things that I, looking at what I went through, I was trying to make sure my children don't go through yeah. that. So sometimes I tell them, I say, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because what was the conflicts? Mm. And when we were eating gari and margarine, yeah. one gari and all that, they were not there. But you give, I give them the best of opportunities. And the thing is that even at their childhood when they were coming up, I was actually buffing my kids. So I wanted to bond with them because mm. I see fathers are not bonded with their children. Yeah. So I, I had to take their bath like most times, even after the age of about five. So it's just recently that I said, no, I mean, they're growing. One is 10, one is seven, and one is so five. Tell me who, the eldest, the name ten. and yes. male. So Sheila. Sheila. She, Shida. Shida. Shida is Thanksgiving. Okay. All my children are named after something, I mean, biblically or something, or that praises God. So, so the first Shida one is Shida, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Asida. Wonderful. That's Asida. Yes. Yeah. Then the second one is Ijemo. Praise. 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 And then the last one is Numoda. It's one of the terms I use all the time. Which Numoda means? is God. God is big. So I always say it whenever I make a statement and things are not good, I say God is big. So I named my child after, after that as well. So I've been that kind of a father who takes care of them, who has changed napkins and yeah. all that. So You've I, been who, present. Who have changed, uh, what, what do you call this thing? Uh, diapers. Diapers. Yes. You know, napkins were of old. Napkins, <laughs> and we're washing it and all that. So child diapers. Yeah fed them like you know you know so i have not been the father who thinks he's a very busy man you know because my i am i am a debbie debbie man when i say debbie debbie is that i came into a marriage where i didn't have money mm. so the point is that my wife of course in 2011 when we came together that's why you say when you marry you have a blessing coming from marriage it was that sort of together so i needed to build a family that really say i shouldn't forget about my past mm -hmm. that looks like now you have money so you when you come home you come and sleep yeah. and take tea in the morning and then read graphic <laughs> <laughs> you're involved and yes, you're present. So in the process. You feel like you've done better than what you received, of course, from your father. Of course, yeah. I mean, comparatively, because especially when they saw me from very, you're like, I, in the first born, I was in actually the hospital, and you know, when he came out, and I, I received him. Mm. So I saw wow, the process. I held on to the, I thought I was the one pushing at the point. I held on to <laughs> the, the bed. Wow. So I was actually, but, I, but it wasn't me doing the whole uh, thing. Uh, they told them, no, very don't, involved. Don't act like you're screaming for me. No, scream for that. <laughs> wow. So I had to give her courage and all that. And so I'm I, sure your yeah. wife appreciates that, you know, because it's not all men who take it to actually be present, say, even in yeah. the delivery room. Yeah. What, what's marriage like for you? See, the thing about marriage is this, that these are two different people who decide to be on their ceiling. They don't even know each other. So it's about compromise. Mm -hmm. And it's about communication. Now, that's about marriage. I tell people that the thing is that they say it's very difficult. Yet, of course, it's not mm -hmm. rosy. Mm -hmm. there, there, are, there are challenges that you have to face. Because in the very first five years of your marriage, if you survive it, eh, then you could probably can go. Okay. Because that is when you didn't know that. Uh, be, is, is that the same person? Money marry Elena. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the question. Is that the same person mm -hmm. I married? Because mm -hmm. that's the stage of now appreciating certain features. Because maybe he snores or mm -hmm. she does that and all that. You need to come and... But yeah. kind of have that, but it helps you to have a reliance. Like if something happens in the house and you're coming back, you know you're somebody you're going to tell. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the depression is too much in this country. Something you have to totally depend on your own self and rethink yeah. and think and think and think. Nobody to share with. So for me, it's a beautiful thing. It's an institution that actually God gave. You need grace. <laughs> you need <laughs> grace because there are times that you look at a difficult nature and you think that you want to go out of it, and you only have to revive it. I took a decision for marriage. And Seeing what I, has gone on with me and all with that, I, I'm not ready. So no matter even what happens, I still want to stay focused and all that. But it's a beautiful thing. I mean, the young people, just that you have to look more psychologically prepared mm -hmm. and understand the thing and all that. I, I got you married and I mean, I have to iron various kind of couture. Like, you, you should dress <laughs> it up. She, she's it's a not fantastic easy. designer. It's not she, easy to even iron, yes. I know, it's, it's not. Yes, she's a fashion me. designer. Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, the dressmaker. Yes. But the thing is that the, the, you have to learn how to even iron and all that. It's part of the whole thing that yeah. when you're getting to marriage. You should, <laughs> you should be prepared for <laughs> Now, Richard, <laughs> yeah. you know, as we round up, would you say that you're living your best life? Yes, and if you don't mind, I would like to give advice to uh, people and all that. Because growing up as a young man, I realized that a lot of me more people cannot achieve because it naturally looks like people are very lazy. 
some, to some extent. When I say lazy, is that they, they, they will work hard for other people, but when it comes to themselves, they don't. Mm. I tell people you salivate at maybe a KFC, but you don't salivate at becoming what you want to become or at the crown that you want. But the question is that you need to understand that sometimes you have to serve some point in your life and become what you want to become. Now, if you don't want to be useful, you become useless. So people will have to use you sometimes. Mm. It's understandable. Because let people, you, you think they're using you, they're using you. But the point is, you are learning. I work with my godfather, he never gave me money. I was learning his business tactics. Today, he's so proud. So I was not looking at money. We were eating bamboo all over the place. Mm -hmm. But the thing was focusing on what I wanted to become. Because I yearned and had a desire. So the principle of life is that you must desire. When you make a desire, you have the desire, you need to make a decision. decision. Mm -hmm. When you move from there, you go to what we call determination. And your last thing is discipline. Discipline is what wakes you up in the morning and know that you must go to work. If you become lazy, you cannot go. So I think that I'm living the, the, the way I want to live in terms of doing what I like most. Mm -hmm. But I believe that I can do more. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said in 2025, 20, there will be 40 under 40 global. So you will yeah. sit in this country and mark it on this show. People will leave their countries and come to their world in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Leave Netherlands, Canada, US, they'll come here. And once I've said it, I'm obliged. That's, that's how I speak. That's how you it's speak. You, yeah. you bind so, yourself to your words. Word. So yeah. I believe that it's going to work as well. So I, I think... It's, it's a good state that I'm in now, but I want to move more. Yeah. Because <laughs> the more you make, the more it finishes. Oh, you need to now move. <laughs> and then move yeah. ahead and still keep making it. Yeah. So now, my final question to you is, if your childhood self were, say, standing in front of you, yeah. Yeah? your childhood self, what would you tell him? So I would just tell him that he needs to understand that he came to the world alone. Now, people actually say they pray for you, but they don't pray for you. So I tell him that you don't depend on people actually to become what you want to become. Everything that you want to become as a child is within you. Mm -hmm. So do not allow the environment, the circumstances to shift your focus. And that you have a parent, I understand. Mm -hmm. But when you're coming, even twins, when they were coming, somebody led, mm -hmm. somebody came. So the uniqueness you have is what you have to focus on and grow yourself into becoming a different person. Look up beyond the horizon. Stand out. Don't be stagnant. Don't stand at one foot. Move. There are energies in this world that m helps you to move if you're making a movement. But if you stand at one place, it's just like a container. When you fill it with water, it's one place. Mm -hmm. And next thing is, it becomes stagnant water and it smells. Mm -hmm. But you need to churn out what you have in you and stir up your spirit and keep moving as a child. And you become what you become. So I think I, I, I want to, I'm looking at my child yeah. right now. I, I'm trying to find how I was when those days I was wearing nika <laughs> short ones and see I was stubborn uh -huh. and dancing on. They mm -hmm. even caged me at a point because he said, but, but, but he is stubborn. Oh. Uh, caging me, caging me. I'm just remembering so, some, some of the days when he said I should look uh, at your my, my child itself, right yes. now. So uh, it's, it's, it's kind of imaginary, beautiful anyway. Oh. <laughs> I, I, and it's beautiful. What you shared is, is beautiful. Yeah. And your story is very inspiring. I would have never guessed actually yeah. that you had the sort of childhood yeah. that you had. A lot. A lot. I've even summarized it for you because yeah. if I go into some other things that I had to get involved in all that, but that's also five. You know, shoemaker and all that I had to do it. So today, if you give me that, uh, they, uh, they have a sorry, sharp this okay. thing with, um, with a, a, a tread. Mm -hmm. I, I could mend your, your slippers. Mm -hmm. I still remember the skill because that was the number kind of sitting down there. Then in the evening, when we get money small, we go and buy shitolo. Do you know shitolo? I don't shitolo know shitolo. is. Um, <laughs> you introduced uh, me to uh, the five. Of course. Maybe. I think I'm trying to make you speak Gamba first. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we use the money to go and buy shit all over and so on the evening and all that. When you have done the bumper I said, which is the concrete, you know, mm -hmm. your skin becomes white. So you know what okay. you do? You get what we call the palm kennel. Yes, that's And I you do. crack uh -huh. it and then you chew it and then you, you, you put it on your leg. Otherwise, your body becomes white. Okay. Yes, this is the survivor. You're a survivor. Greece. You're a survivor. Yes. I think that's the word that really describes Thank your you journey. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're a survivor. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard, for Thank sharing you. Sure. your incredible story sure. with us here on the Natalie Thank Port you. Show. And next, we've got... Fantastic. I'm going to be playing a very exciting game with Richard titled Mr. President. You wouldn't want to miss it. Stay with us. Richard, your story is incredible. And like you said, you're a survivor. Yeah. That, to me, is the word that really describes your journey. You're sure. a survivor. And it encourages us all sure. to survive, sure. right? So yeah. thank you so much for sharing a beautiful story. I'm going to move to a game now that we yeah. have here on the Natalie Ford Show. Yeah. <laughs> and the segment is titled Fantastic. And I'm playing a game with you called Mr. President. Okay. okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All yeah. right. So I'm going to read out the instructions. And I've got my team that are going to be helping us with the timer that's going to be running throughout this game. 
The instructions, in exactly one minute or less, you're expected to answer three key questions mm -hmm. as the president of Ghana. So, you're president for now, okay. <laughs> on this show, I mean, you're president. For one minute. For, yes, mm -hmm. exactly, for three minutes. Yeah, okay, three. Now, there's no right or wrong response. Okay. Yes. You're simply expected to respond as Mr. President, okay? okay? Sure. So, maximum one minute per question. Right. We'll have our timer running sure. while you answer, okay? Mm -hmm. So, question number one. In one minute, how do we make Accra the cleanest city in Africa? I mean, basic principle. The thing is that we have to bring the town council thing back again. I mean, those times, what we did was that we had people that were inspecting your house. And when you hear they say, town council is mm -hmm. coming, or they call it town council, mm -hmm. they change to town council. When they are coming, you run away, you're going to take your rubbish. So you have to bring back tax folks that go to your houses and then make sure that you don't put the rubbishes and keep them at the place. Because when you keep them, is when you throw them into the uh, 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 gutter and it gets mm -hmm. to the Kole Lagoon. The Kole Lagoon has suffered too much. It has to be clean. So we bring back the town council tax box people in order to make sure that people don't, uh, people are getting, get scared. They actually keep to, 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 to their dustbins and then mm -hmm. keep their houses clean. Yes. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Second question. Aside from English, we need a national language for Ghana. Which local language <laughs> should we pick and why? This is, this is an unfair. <laughs> I know, <laughs> especially coming from the But you're the Mr. Dark president, president, but I know. I I'm know. the president, but <laughs> the thing, look, okay, clearly, of course, tree has become dominant. Mm -hmm. You can't do much about it. Everybody, even the French people who enter into this country, start speaking tree. Mm -hmm. They can't even speak the Ga. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is that I will recommend that we use the language that has gone out to a lot of people, and people can actually speak fluently. Mm -hmm. Not to become biased and say, I'm a fan of a Ga, mm -hmm. so we should speak the Ga. I mean, just because even people come here and they can say Akwaba mm -hmm. alone, well, we can't get Akwaba in Ga. Mm -hmm. You understand it's not to say the language is inferior which is the gamma yes she seems to be more predominant widely spoken, and widely spoken. we need to so use tree. That one. Yes, mr please. president yes. Yes. unfortunately yes. unfortunately yes <laughs> <laughs> okay question number three will you increase maintain or reduce the number of regions in ghana and why Yes, because the thing is that in South Africa, there were only nine provinces and there are 69 million. So I don't think that you need 16 countries mm -hmm. to build this, 16 regions mm -hmm. to build the country. It's decentralization should focus. Mm -hmm. I was in a province called Limpopo, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, they're independent. They have a, a, a municipal that was supporting ideas mm -hmm. that were coming out. So if everything is centralized in government, and you have to always move from your regions, mm -hmm. that is why there's no development. So you don't need this. You need to centralize and make sure that people have their own budget and power. So if you promise them two million, they should have that money to be able to run the country. And that's it. There's a young man in South Africa that I am who is trying to even create a municipal by trying to create amenities and all that and get another municipal because mm -hmm. he thinks that if he does that government is going to listen to him. So mm -hmm. we don't need 16 regions. So decrease? Country. Yeah, so I would decrease or maintain. It. This is not decrease. without to what number? politics and all that. No, I, I, the, the point is that let me go back to my 10. Of course, that's what I've survived on for years. Mm -hmm. So I, as a president mm -hmm. of this country, and mm -hmm. I'm speaking as a president. Yes, you are. You are Mr. Minutes, president of now. Yeah. So it is not with any political intent. Okay. But I would like to go back to the chapter. And empower the districts. Give them enough money. Let them run the district mm -hmm. themselves. Not to decentralize. You need something. You have to come to Accra. Sharp responses. Thank you, Mr. President. You're actually seated like a president now. <laughs> Thank I you. Wish. <laughs> you wish well. Uh, you never know what, what lies ahead, of right? Thank yeah, you. Great. Thank you so so much, Richard. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure having you, Thank you. on this episode of the Natalie Fortune. Stay you. with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>《Many ways to get around, but there's only one way to pay. Momo? Sure. So many styles to choose, but there's only one sure way to pay. Momo? Yes. There's so many you can buy, but there's only one sure way to pay. Momo? Yes. Yeah. There's so much variety, but there's only one sure way to pay. There's so many ways to get together, but there's only one sure way to pay. Got a payment to make? Use MTN Momo and enjoy real convenience in all your financial transactions. Live life the brighter way with MTN Momo. Just Momo it. MTN. Hot Kick is a show where 10 fine looking gentlemen, hmm? when I say fine, I mean guys with some six packs, 
and some arms, just like myself, are trying to secure a spot in this girl's life. I mean, when I say girl, I mean she's hot, hot cake, hot, hot cake. And she's all definition of sexy. I mean, she's a super kind of sexy. Super, she's a kind of sexy. And she's a kind of sexy. And she's smart and beautiful. This show promises to be more fun, hmm? more drama. When I say drama, this kind of drama. And also a bit of fight and a bit of romance, a bit of kisses here and there. And the things you would not even expect on the show, we will give it to you. You watching at home are going to be our TV in-laws. I mean, you are going to help us secure that perfect gentleman. And perfect gentleman for the lady, the hot cake on the show. And yes, my name is Lexi the Comet, and I'm going to be your host for this show. Dance Off, coming soon. On this segment, we seek to celebrate women who are making a great impact with the support of APSA. Here is a star woman. Hello everyone, my name is Eton Amsi, a communication strategist, founder CEO of Inspire Today. I'm really not sure where that came from, or I should think that the glitz and the glamour that comes with it, you on TV, you look nice, you have nice hair, nice clothes. So people think that women in the media are rich, very, very rich, and your pastor at work is expecting at a church is expecting your family members your siblings everybody thinks you've hit some gold and it's crazy um i think that would be the first misconception about women in the media the second misconception is that women in the media are rude and that's because you know our job comes with a lot of reading researching so you're on top of your business you speak with a lot of confidence. So people, if someone doesn't know you personally, they think you're rude, they think you are, um, you are. So you find a lot of people in the media space not married, a lot of the women not married because other people are thinking that you're too high class, you, you think you are all that. So this would be the two main biggest misconceptions about women in the media. We need to tell people the truth. Um, if you're seeing the narrative in terms of um, earning our place in the business, if it's earning our place in the business, we need to work hard. I don't believe in being handed over something just because you're a woman or just because you have a pretty face or you sound good on TV, on radio. You need to earn your place, you need to read, you need to, um, you need to let people know why they're giving you an opportunity to be there. And so earn your place, work hard, read, and also tell people the truth. Up and coming young women must know that the media doesn't pay. I mean, if you want to be in the media to make money, you're in the wrong business. So you should be in the media because the passion is what drives us. You'll be at work from dawn to dusk. It doesn't pay, but because you know that you're impacting society, that is why you're there. So we must work hard. We must earn our place. And we must earn our place at the table. And we must tell the young people the truth about what the profession really entails. I think that we need to do a lot more than we are doing now. I mean, usually you find documentaries and it's just centered in the greater Accra region or the cities. If you go to the rural communities, you see like women are really, really struggling. There are people whose stories must be told. So I think that the media must work. We have some media houses who are already doing it. We have to go beyond and tell the stories of women who are doing so much. So you go to a community where women are selling gari. A woman wakes up, adults, she has six children. She's taking care of them and she's working hard. She has a, she's a farmer and she's working hard so that her produce can go out there. You have women who are doing excellently well, not just women who are sitting in the office, but women who are doing excellently well. And our stories must be told. And it must not be told only when we are marking International Women's Day. It must be told every blessed day. Oh, I'll say the biggest breakthrough for me was when I was put on the morning show. I didn't know how big that platform was, was until I was put on the morning show because everything you say, 
let me use the court word, can be used against you in the court of law. <laughs> so uh, when you're on the morning show, you have to be extremely careful and be sure what you say because people take your word for it. It's a big platform. And for me, I was put on the show when just before we went on a lockdown. And so there were people at home. We had eyeballs. It gave me the visibility, even up until today, people still remember me for being on the morning show. It's my, it, it, by far my biggest media breakthrough. I think we should take out the easy because it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely difficult, Natalie. There was a time I was running a 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. schedule because I was on the morning show. So I, I, I leave the house at 4 a.m. I get to work at 5. I do my makeup and get ready. We go live at 6 a.m. And then we are on till 10 a.m. When I'm done, I go to the newsroom, put together stories, do all we can do, and get ready for News 360. I mean, I was on it with you a few times. And it's not a joke. So by the time I'm leaving the house, my kids are asleep. By the time I get back, they're asleep. And on Saturday, I'm on radio from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. It's not a joke. But you see, what I know in this world and with every profession is that when there's a will, there's a way. If you're willing to do something, you find a way to do it. And so I just had to find a way. And I must say that I have a very supportive husband. And my, my family has been supportive when I'm not around. They find a way in sitting. I don't think that I've come this far in my career, but for the support of my husband. He's been there every step of the way. You know, I think what makes me smile is when I see other people happy, especially people who cannot give me any, any, anything back in return. Very inspiring story. Hope you enjoyed that. Every day we have millions of Kenyans who are out there hustling for their daily bread. Now, we seek to celebrate you on Proud of My Hustle. That's next. I've not born here because we are a young couple on a day. My dear, 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 my Obiasuano. <laughs> You've been watching the Natalie Ford Show. It's been an incredible episode with Richard Abbey Jr. and all our other features on our various segments. Thank you so much for making the time to join us this evening here on the Natalie Ford Show where we have conversations that matter. A special thank you to our sponsors for making this show possible, to MTN, to Duktas Furniture, for giving us this beautiful space for this episode of the Natalie Ford Show. Special thank you to APSA Bank Ghana, as well as Self Search Ghana Limited, Mahalia Collection for my lovely dress, and Wella Dazzles for my jewelry. Thank you so much for watching the Natalie Ford Show this evening. We join you same time next week here on GH1 Television. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>